Chapter 12 Kate woke early the next morning. Though it had been nice sleeping in a real bed, it still wasn't a bed she was used to. She pulled a dress on and opened the bedroom door quietly, but was surprised to see Jessie already awake and reading at the table. I'm sorry, I thought I would be up before you, she said, stepping into the kitchen area. I'm always up early to read, Jessie said with a smile. I feel it's my best time with the Lord. He gestured at his mug. I made some coffee. Do you drink it? Kate shook her head. No, I'm afraid I never developed a taste. Do you have any tea? Afraid not, but as it's Saturday, we can go into town and get some. The sheriff gave me a few days off to help you get situated. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Have you eaten? Kate asked, feeling like she should be doing something. I could make breakfast. Breakfast would be nice, Jessie said. After a few moments of fiddling with the stove, she managed to light the burner and set a skillet on to warm. In the icebox, she found eggs and bacon and added them to the skillet. Soon, the sound of sizzling bacon filled the room. Kate found a bit of bread left and added it to the skillet to warm. When everything was ready, she loaded up two plates and brought one to Jesse and set the other down for herself. Before he picked up his fork, he closed his eyes, and Kate followed suit. Lord, thank you for this food you have provided for us. Help keep us safe and help us to keep our focus on you. Amen. Amen, Kate echoed. She watched with bated breath while Jesse took a bite of his food, hoping it would meet his standard. Though not as good a cook as her mother had been, Cooking was one of the few womanly skills Kate could do. His eyebrows arched up as he glanced at her. This is really good, Kate. Much better than the fare I was making myself. I wasn't going to say anything, Kate said with a smile. But you could use some cooking lessons. I'm sorry you were subjected to my cooking the other morning, and I'm mighty glad you're taking over that chore as I might very well end up poisoning the both of us, he said with a chuckle, as he returned her smile. It was amazing how much a smile changed his face. The hard lines disappeared and tiny crinkles appeared at the corner of his eyes. Kate wasn't sure how, but she was determined to bring that smile around more often. Jessie glanced at Kate as they pulled into town. While she wasn't Pauline, she had a charm about her, and her cooking was definitely an improvement on his own. I need to stop in and talk to Sheriff Johnson for a bit. Are you good to secure the food items you need on your own? Jesse asked, as he pulled up in front of the general store. I think I can manage, Kate said. Jesse helped her down from the wagon and placed a few bills in her palm. Get whatever you need, and I'll be back in a minute to help you load it up. Jessie watched her walk into the general store, and then turned toward the sheriff's office. I see you couldn't wait to replace Pauline, James said, as he stepped out of the saloon and into Jessie's path. The smell of alcohol filled the air around him. It's not like that, James. Kate is the only person who knows what the man who killed Pauline looks like, and she needed a home. I had one. It's as simple as that. You can tell yourself that all you want, James said, poking a finger in Jessie's chest. But it looks like you've replaced her to everyone else. James, go home and sleep it off, Jessie said, stepping out of the way. We can talk more when you have a clearer head. This isn't finished, Jesse Jennings, James roared, but he lumbered away in the opposite direction, using the sides of the buildings to keep himself upright. Jesse sighed as he continued to the sheriff's office. James was another problem he would have to deal with soon, but his most pressing concern was still Bill Easterly. The sheriff was seated at his desk, scanning papers. Any word on Easterly, Sheriff? Jesse asked as he sat across from the sheriff. 
He hasn't returned to his house, but a few nearby towns have telegraphed they have seen him. So apparently he's still in the area. Unfortunately, they are out of my jurisdiction, and we can't just go mounting up without an invitation. So are we still just waiting and hoping he shows up again? Jesse tried to contain the frustration in his voice. It's all we can do right now, Jesse. I'm sorry. Jesse sent up a silent prayer for patience before saying, Understood, Sheriff. I'll just be sure to keep my eyes open should the opportunity arise. We will all be watching. Jesse shook hands with the sheriff and then made his way back to the general store. Kate was exiting the general store as he returned, her arms laden with packages. Here, let me help you with those, he said, relieving her of a few of the parcels. Did you find everything you needed? Yes, thank you, Kate said, but her eyes were cast down. What is it? Jesse asked as he placed the parcels in the wagon. Nothing, let's just go, Kate said. Jesse wanted to press the issue, but he didn't want to cause a scene in town. As the wagon pulled out of town, though, he turned to her. Please, tell me what happened. Kate sniffed. There was a woman in the store who heard we got married. She told me I had no respect for Pauline marrying you so quickly after her death. Will they all treat me like this? What good is staying if I'm to be an outcast? No, not everyone will treat you like that, Jesse said, gritting his teeth and wondering who would be so cruel to Kate. He could think of only a few, with Pauline's closest friend, Rebecca, being at the top of the list. A part of him wanted to turn the wagon around and find the woman and talk some sense into her. But he knew that would only make the matter worse. Most people in Sage Creek are kind, decent folks. But you have to remember that Pauline was born here, so some folks have known her a very long time. I know they will come around once they get to know you. As Kate flashed him a small smile, Jesse felt a sliver of the emotional wall he had built around his heart chip away. He hadn't known her long, but he had been telling the truth. There was something about Kate that was endearing, and he knew the town would accept her if they would give her a chance. Thank you. I suppose I should be used to the attention. Even back in Boston, I garnered it because I was not the kind of woman society wanted. I suppose I had hoped it would be different here. Jessie took her hand and squeezed it. It will be. Many of Pauline's friends are still grieving, but with time their hearts will be softened. He realized as he said the words that they could apply to him as well. Pauline still had the primary place in his heart, but there was now a tiny opening for Kate and he believed that one day that tiny opening would expand.